For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website is channelstv.com, youtube.com forward slash channelsweb has videos of our shows. We'll now continue with our focus on Nigeria's infrastructure. We're now being joined on the News at 10 by Professor Benga Nubi from the Department of Housing in the University of Lagos to discuss further on the challenges uh, of the infrastructure, especially housing for our country, Nigeria, even after many years of independence. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on the News at 10. But do you say that Nigeria is at par, if you will, with some of its fellow developing countries in terms of infrastructure development? in your area, for instance, let's begin from there, the housing sector. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, I, I remember very well the time the president of uh, America, uh, President Bill Kilty, came to this country during the time of uh, President Obasanjo. Kilty said something about our infrastructure. Um, as uh, he said, America, does not have great infrastructure because America is great. But America is great because America has great infrastructure. It's the infrastructure that will lead to economic growth and development that will make any nation to be great. So when you travel around the world today, what we call basic infrastructure, electricity, water, good transportation system, there is no room for comparison. And the unfortunate thing is that quite other nations around the world were making progress, amazing progress, that you see it, it's, it blows your mind. But you travel roads that were once in good condition in this country, they were just, they, they, the roads have disappeared. The housing deficit, like you said earlier, is increasing. So there is no room for comparison. The only thing we can do is that Let's interrogate why the deficit is ever increasing, despite the fact that there were several programs in the past. In addition to that, uh, there has been huge funding over the past years from previous administrations. And then uh, we're still having these reports of deficits in critical areas such as housing, uh, which you are an expert in. What do you think is the problem, actually? Yeah, it's, uh, it's basic. There are fundamental problems. And I just want to give this analogy. Huge money spent on what? Housing is a system. Housing is like a car. You say today I have a car, it's only a problem with my battery, you don't have a car. You say I have a beautiful car, I have a problem with my tire, you don't have a car. Before you can say you have a car, every component of that car, must be working, and that's housing. So there are, housing is a system, and it consists of several components. The land is there, the infrastructure is there, the building material is there, the artisan to even put the, together the technology. We must, everything must be working together before we can. But why do we see huge expenditure and very little or nothing to show? It's like this analogy. Uh, of just looking at the fantasy, living in fantasy island, you know. I was in a seminar in the US several years ago, and someone said the problem of African infrastructure is like one of the United States of Africa. You just come to New York and see a fast moving train. And he just said, How much is this fast moving train? And he said, Seven billion. Okay, seven billion, nine dollars, seven million dollars. We can afford that and pay it. Put it inside a container, bring it to Africa. And they brought it to Africa. Is that a problem? And they assemble it. Will it work? It will, it will not work. It will not work. Train will not work on the moat ground. You need to build infrastructure. You need to build the track first. What you see as huge expenditure is just for the purchase of the train. We need to go back to the basics and build the basic infrastructure first before we can have before we can show value for the money we are putting into housing. What's your thoughts when people say that a viable mortgage system will address the problems of uh, housing in Nigeria? Do you agree with that statement? It is only way out. 
is the only way out. Nigeria is not isolated in the Committee of Nations. We all run a global economy. Your ATM card is the same ATM card you use in New York. There can't be, you can't be different. It's only in this part of the world that a young graduate will leave university, work for five years, and he say, I want to build a house. It's only here you hear such statement. All over the world, US, UK, any European country, what you hear is, I want to buy a house. The poor man, an average citizen of any developed nation, they buy houses. The rich won't build. But it's reverse in Africa. The poor man builds, and the rich man is buying. It cannot work. Housing is a commodity. Until we begin to see housing as a commodity, and we begin to see a finance structure that will make you to purchase it as a commodity. And that is mortgage is the, is the source of, is the source of uh, uh, purchase of any housing. Mortgage is that you have a housing stock and fund is made available that you can buy the house and pay for about 25 to 25 years. That's where the affordability comes in. So the solution is, let's look down, let's see how do we grow the mortgage sector. Except we grow the mortgage sector, there is no solution to housing problem. That's a good place to let it rest. Right. Thank you so much indeed. Professor Benga Nubi from the Department of Housing, University of Lagos. Many thanks indeed for talking to us on the News at 10. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Watching the news at 10 on Channels Television, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's quickly cross over to our Abuja studios now, where Linda Kigwe is standing by to take us through a couple of more stories. Linda in green today, away from the red yesterday. Good to see you. <laughs> Hello, Gimba. Good to see you and welcome to Abuja. We we'll begin with the National Assembly. Members of the House of Representatives were today divided over a motion seeking to ask the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to deregister political parties who failed to win at least one seat in the national or state houses of assembly in the last general elections. While some of the lawmakers questioned the powers of INEC to deregister the political parties, others were of the opinion that it was necessary to investigate whether or not such powers existed and why the electoral body was yet to deregister the political parties in line with the provisions of the Electoral Act. Our correspondent Terry Ikumi reports. The Deputy Speaker presides over the final plenary for the week in the absence of the Speaker. One of the items up for debate is a motion calling on the Independent National Electoral Commission to implement Section 78, Subsection 72 of the Electoral Act. Failure of any political party to win at least one seat in the National Assembly or the State House of Assembly will result in the registration of the said political party. Concern that the, since the commencement of Section 78, 72, this act has not fully been implemented, given the rising number of political parties in Nigeria. After the motion is moved, the Chief Whip raises a point of order on the powers of the electoral body, to which the Deputy Speaker agrees. The Supreme Court has made pronouncement in National Conscience Party Basu, INIC, square to the pronouncement, interpretation of that law, that INIC does not have the power to deregister political parties because it is in clear violation of the constitution that gave people the freedom of association. I, I am very much intending with him. The primary function of a legislator is to make law. When it comes to interpretation, we cannot be the one to say, okay, this is the way to do about it. And then enforcing the law is not also the side in our own jurisdiction. A lawmaker raises another point of order, this time in support of the motion. But the deputy speaker disagrees. Even INEC is complaining. The incumbent 
by some of these uh, 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 provisions. Let us know why it is not being put into effect. The best way to cure, if Speaker Jigma had made a statement, is for us now to come back here, amend the law, and take it back. You can't, you can't go through the back door to achieve that one. It's not possible. I will rather beg you, sir, to step down this motion, uh, allow us further input, study. The motion is eventually stepped down. The House of Representatives has now adjourned till Wednesday, the 2nd of October, due to the observance of the country's independence on Tuesday, the 1st of October. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. From the House of Reps, we move to the upper chamber, where lawmakers today adopted a legislative agenda for the next four years. The agenda intends to reposition the Senate to carry out its constitutional duties of legislation, oversight and representation to achieve sustainable economic growth and development. As we enter the ninth Senate, more of oversight. And you see, when you talk about oversight, the legislature should know that it is independent. They should make 21st century laws. Have an independent parliament that will checkmate the assessors of the government. Parliamentary reporters speaking to channels television on what they expect from the Ninth Senate. A lot rests on the Ninth National Assembly to provide leadership, effective oversight and people-centered legislation. This may be the reason why the Senate is setting a legislative agenda for the next four years. The agenda is presented during Thursday's plenary, and it is coming at a time when the nation is experiencing an underperforming economy, security challenges, and a dissatisfied citizenry. Key aspects of the agenda include review of its standing rules 2015 to continue legislative business of the Senate, which remains undetermined at the close of a session or life of the Senate, anti-corruption legislation to ensure quick dispensation of justice in corruption-related cases, effective and well-planned oversight of government MDAs to expose corruption and inefficiency, constitution amendment, electoral reform, Strengthen legislation to protect women from violence and all forms of abuse. Lawmakers spent the entire day debating how to use this agenda to fight corruption, create employment and secure the lives of Nigerians. If we do not achieve local government financial autonomy, Mr. President, the issue of poverty, the issue of security, the issue of all the issues we are raising today will not be caught. I would like to recommend that we should start that sectoral reform and intervention beginning with the agricultural sector intervention, which we've been focusing on national food security as a key priority. We cannot be having 30% recurrent uh, capital expenditure, 30% capital and 70% recurrent. It's not going to work, and that is why nothing is going on. We are here to make a very positive difference in the lives of Nigerians. Uh, we want to make our country better. The Senate plans to set up a committee which will periodically remind it of its commitments as a way to ensure that it complies with its legislative agenda. Linda.